Gamers all around the globe want two things and two things only. Hot dog water G Fuel and to be the best that there ever was. That's why today I'm taking matters into my own hands. With all the nerfs coming to Borderlands 3, I'm about to show you the only viable build option that will be left for anyone to run. Today we will be playing glorified Pokemon, but with death. And in first person and the presence of Ellie's sweet voluptuous in celebration of Pokemon Silver and Gold coming out next month, join along as we answer a question no sane person has ever asked. Can you beat Borderlands 3 with only flax pets? The reason why no one has ever asked this question before is because doing so would be equivalent to overdosing on Gushers and Mocha Frappa Titty Lattes. Those Pokemon roleplay fantasies must come to fruition if we even want to see this run be remotely possible, as we all know flax pets deal about as much damage as a used condom. Though, before we dive into this glorified let's play, let's discuss the rules, gentle boys. Rule 1. No guns, grenades, shield damage, your vehicle damage must be dealt to my enemies. Only my Pokemon can attack them. I will allow for Flax Rack Attack to be used this run, as well as his Pokemon Sword and Shield Dynamaxing ability. Rule 2. In correlation to Rule 1, I will have to use my vehicle to kill enemies and for a certain boss to help proceed with the story. Those will be the only exceptions. I myself can't kill anyone with anything other than Rack Attack. Rule 3. Buckle your seatbelts and prepare those butt chicks, boys. I want all of you to whip out your Game Boy Advance SPs and throw that sweet, sweet Borderlands 3 cartridge in. If you were poor like I was and could only afford a Game Boy Advance, which basically meant you could only play in the sun and and your friends made fun of you and they called you a loser for god damn it. <laughs> crying emoji. Tag along as we tackle this challenge, take on the Pokemon League, and capture this grain, gentlemen. For this challenge, it's quite obvious which Vault Hunter we're going to pick. But just in case you didn't listen or weren't paying attention, we will be running Amara. I named Amara after the same guy that invented the Krabby Patty formula and Kim Possible theme song and set off with Claptrap to assault a stronghold. After watching our robotic friend get super sucked by the insane clown posse, I used the guns he gave me to say hi and give a friendly greeting to all of my newfound friends. I got to my first gym battle and I was a little sad face emoji at the fact that I couldn't use my pets for this one, as I wasn't level 2 yet. But with the power of god and anime on my side, Shiv was dead and I was now a Pokemon trainer. Forged in the fires of Randy Pitchford's ass cheeks, the Jabber, my starter Pokemon, was brought to fruition. I will be using this little beefcake for a majority of this run. Using old PewDiePie memes for his main source of damage is glorious, and I expect nothing else but loyalty and ass clappage from such a Chad. I followed Lilith to Mouthpiece's office and surprisingly, it turns out Mouthpiece has a good taste in animes. Much, but to the eye of a trained professional like me, this weapon- Oh man, I knew it. Being a Pokemon trainer so far felt great. Seeing those barrels lobbed into a group of enemies gave ordering furry suits and strange hentai from the slums of Asia a run for its money. Not only was watching his crusade enjoyable, but I had to admire that dude's skills. His aim was equivalent, if not better, to most of the FaZe clan members, and Tifu, the Fortune Knight god shivers and butt cracks at just the thought of my Pokemon's accuracy. In due time and a couple of rack attacks later, the enemies perished and I met with Vaughn. I tried making my Pokemon let him down, but it was impossible so I had to use Rack Attack. After returning Captain Underpants to his babysitter, I was told to go find Ellie. Normally I would let her presence distract me, but I only had one thing on my mind. To clap and booty blast a couple more banded ass chicks, because that shit was addicting. Now that Catcher Ride was up and running, I had a question on my mind. Can I get Claptrap his nipple hat? The answer to that question was no. My efforts were unfortunately futile. My purpose on this godforsaken planet was now diminished. But I wasn't going to let this stand in the way of my jab burn die because our dick game is on point baby Woo! after a few side quests and bonding it was time to assault the children of cringe but before i could do that i forgot something incredibly imperative to the success of our pokemon journey i forgot that i could name my pokemon i named him after a man that assisted abraham lincoln while he was in office and it was time for ben and i to collab on some children of cringe mud flaps but before we can continue on with our holy crusade let's discuss the plan this run boys operation playing borderlands while eating sausages raw when I'm supposed to be doing my homework is now in full
full effect. Training for this challenge this run wasn't easy. I had to absorb as much Pokemon content as I possibly could to be sure I was ready for such a feat. Ben the Jabber was going to be my main Pokemon and my racks were going to be my side damage. The blue tree was imperative as that tree was basically the turnpike for Ben to reach Booty Blastingville. After that, investing in the red tree for my racks to become full on butt plugs wasn't too bad of an idea also. Although rack attack would be my main ultimate, I will at times Dynamax Ben for some extra DPS. Each Pokemon gym will need to be taken care of before I could reach the Elite Four. Hey guys, and in hindsight, future Samantha wished he didn't do this challenge because it was horrifying. We got a long road ahead of us boys, so make sure your Game Boy SP chargers are plugged in and ready for this journey. With rack attack and a flurry of radiated barrels, Ben and I took on the world, but after taking out the trash, it was time to enter the salty Splatoon. Inside Mouthpiece's compound wasn't any different. I threw out a couple racks, Ben threw a couple barrels, and it was now time for our first Pokemon Gym battle. Hey guys, Moxie's right, tit 33 here. Oh, fucking eat my ass with a spoon, you. Ugh. God damn it. This was where my complications first started to arise. Ben was doing a decent bit of damage, and my rack cooldown was meh. But the problem was that if I was downed, I needed to rely on Ben to kill an enemy for a second wind. And relying on him is like relying on your dad to come home from his trip to the corner store. The perfect balance of commanding and just destroying that space bar was needed. Eventually, after getting a technique down, which by the way, you can watch each and every boss fight with a link in the description, Ben was able to take out Mouthpiece, and I felt like a proud father. It was going to take some time, but I was confident that this run was going to be a banger. With Vault Key piece in hand, we got Tannis to charge that bitch, was forced into vehicular manslaughter for the sake of the main story, and stole a nav chip from SpaceX with Ben. Lilith got her siren power stolen, but that's okay, because it's not like she was useful for anything besides making bad decisions. We were now in space and it was time to head to Promethea. Even though Team Rocket was already harbored there, you could bet your sweet nipples that Ben and I were heading down there to take care of some business. Ben showed a few rats the taste of pain and suffering and I discovered an interesting technique for a future run. Even if there are enemies around, if you engage the Lorelei cutscene, the enemies will disappear, freeing you from their nuisance. Lorelei, the leader of the Thundercats, informed me about Reese and we made on our way. We pushed forward through the courtyards and this was where I realized my fate. This was how most of this run would turn out to be. I would be sitting in a corner, like a little baby man in between rack attack cooldowns and Ben out on the battlefield, taking all the enemies to Flavortown. I was actually okay with this fate because early on in this run, Ben seemed to be juicing assholes left and right, and I enjoyed the carry for once. After he got his 8th pentakill and clearing out the area, we got to re-strong fork. I mean, he was pretty cool, but unfortunately his mustache had a better personality than him, because he wasn't voiced by Troy Baker anymore. We needed to find an Atlas operative, but before we could do that, it was time for a few side quests. My favorite things ever. If you haven't kept up with the anime recently in the last episode, I made a promise to never trash side quests again. The fact that I take back everything I said about side quests. And for my 100k subscriber special, I will be doing a 24 hour let's play stream of me doing just side quests and talking about my Fortnite KDA. After realizing what a genuine guy the coffee bot was, it was time to get to work on finding this operative. On our journey to find this man, I saw poor Ben throw a barrel at himself instead of the actual enemies. I'm not sure if he's a masochist or just has poo poo brain, but I still love him. We found Mr. 305 and god damn! This shit was amazing. This cutscene literally always has worse frames than GoldenEye for the Nintendo 64. With Zero now by our side, I don't even need to commentate on how this shit turned out. You know what we're capable of, and our dick game was at level 100. During this time, I was also fortunate enough to discover a decent combo. Send out as many racks as you possibly can and switch to Dynamaxing Ben for the highest DPS possible. Throw that technique in a blender with a bit of hiding in a corner waiting for cooldowns and a pinch of not being funny at all and hot damn look at that baby! We got a little bitch smoothie. Butt chicks were slammed, hearts were broken, but we couldn't stop there because Katagawa said that we f***ed up and he was coming for our RuneScape accounts. So that meant that the next gym leader was on the hit list. The tussle with Giga Chad was already planned in my head so I wasn't even worried. As Ben focused on Big Brain, I would focus on the trash mobs with my rack attack. 
No full restore was needed for this boss and disclaimer, I will say now that I did have a moment where I nearly shit myself during this boss fight. Ugh. Ben, don't do this to me, please. Please, Ben. Oh my god, where's my dialysis machine? Please, just, Ben, kill- yeah. Oh my god, yes, Ben. You're getting a fucking raise, baby. With Giga Chad now turned into a Steve Harvey fleshlight, I stuck him into Reese's computer and found out where the next vault key was. Athena's was next and I was more than ready for this migraine. Ben and I literally got our meats destroyed just attempting to get to Maya. After getting to Sith Lord Maya, she gave me a sensu bean to rejuvenate from all the ass patty cake we just got, and we got to work, returning the favor. The next gym leader was General Taint. I wanted the diplomatic approach on this one because every run of mine dealing with him has been nearly impossible, but Ben wanted otherwise. After trying a couple of times, I realized that Rack Attack was going to be absolutely useless, so I was going to have to rely on Ben this entire fight. Thanks to my tactical planning abilities, I perfectly displayed a true set of skills and perseverance. Beautifully and wonderfully executed like a Russian ballerina, I commanded Ben to victory. The next vault key piece was now in my hand. It was time to help Reese with Katagawa, but first, Ben informed me of someone that was on his hit list. Someone that really grinded his gears because he used to smash his current crush, Moxie. Ben, I want you to end that Minecraft YouTuber's career. With Ben's conscience now cleared, it was time to get back to the matter at hand. The pre-sequel took a good bit of time and waiting for Ben to pop all the baddies was torturous, but I enjoyed seeing him send the enemies into the Kerbal Space Program. We got to Katagawa's butt plug and I wasn't sure that I was ready for this fight. I was worried about him using a full restore like he did in the last video, but fortunately due to our constant shooting and damaging him, he didn't. I watched my boy Ben kill that thing and it was absolutely glorious. He was growing up and I couldn't believe it. I felt like a proud father. I mean, yeah, obviously this was only done due to my universe brain commanding skills, but watching him fight admirably was still beautiful. It was now time to go hunt down Katagawa. This was going to be a simple get in and get out type of quest, boys. If you watched my other videos, you would know exactly how good I am at doing these things. Dying is not an option, and we only have one shot. I could promise you that no dying was involved, and my Pokemon obeyed every single command that I told him. While I was showing the next gym leader how to do the cooking by the book, I realized that we hit that dude like a truck. Ben and I were spit roasting him like the 1927 spit roasting national championship. Just looking at this dude resulted in him losing 25% of his health. And then of course, as always, I got unlucky. No. But that didn't stop Ben and I from coming back and having a Spongebob knee slapping competition on his carcass. Maya, Ben, and I got to the Children of Cringe stronghold and it was time for a true display of epic gamer moment skill. With them by my side, I wouldn't ask for nothing less from such a great team. We eventually got to the Vault Guardians and beat them all in a game of Dance Dance Revolution, which in turn gave us access to the Rampager. The Rampager was difficult, but my Ben and I made a valiant effort. We showed that dude our 8th grade report cards, which in turn lowered his defense stat and then I proceeded to command Ben to use Tackle. I almost died and lost my shit after doing this fight for 23 minutes, but good thing we had Maya, pre-book form of course, in the fight so that she could revive me. You know, I didn't realize this before, but Ben has a Vault Beast fetish, because that boy ate the fuck out of that Rampager's ass. Testosterone seething from every orifice, the Rampager was dead and blah blah blah, Maya turned into a legendary class mod. Laugh guys, please laugh guys, that was, guys please. Also, uh, <laughs> I have no idea what the heck this revolver was doing, but this man was really trying to dip the f*** out of there. Ben and I were now ready for Eden 6. After some much needed Eden 6 planetary and geographic research, I was more than ready to take on whatever it was to come my way on this feral planet. I met with Wainwright and went straight in on the action. Ben and I pushed forward to find our main man, Master Chief, aka Marcus from Gears of War, aka my dad, and it was nice not doing work for once. I watched as they collabed and showed me how it was done. The synergy between those two was unmatched. I pushed forward and met with not so tiny Tina, got her bombs ready, and it was time for the prison warden. This shit was 1000% going to be the biggest goddamn nightmare I have ever dealt with. Ben and I couldn't deal enough damage to stop him from evolving, so that warden literally hit Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, aka Super Saiyan Blue, and then proceeded to suck our farts through an aluminum straw. Because, you know, he's environmentally friendly. This fight was monotonous and just. <sighs> this fight was poopy, okay?
Uh, what else can I say? This fight was just straight up dog shit. My racks pulled in clutch, I released Hammerlock, and then it was time to hit up the Jacobs Manor. I enjoyed watching Ben play baseball and we proceeded through that manor with ease. My racks and Ben made it easy to take out Billy the Anointed for once and I was feeling pretty damn good. With mixtape now in hand, I returned it back to Wainwright and we jammed to that bad boy. Poppy Gamerlock had a fire verse on that track and we went down to hunt down Ice-T, his crown jewel. I used the RuneScape Super Strength Potion with a baguette to muster up the strength to kill this dinosaur, and I found Ice-T deep inside of the poor beast. Ben, Ice-T, and I proceeded through the downed ship, giving the creatures that rested inside their birthday presents. Which, newsflash, just in case you're potentially legally blind or listening to this while you drive, hopefully not at the same time though. We were giving them the gift of death. All those creatures are now dead. We got to Genevieve and I actually died during our first tussle. After though, Ben and Balex did some sort of Dragon Ball Z fusion and sent her back into the torrent she came from. Next I was given the rogue site by Clay to hunt down Archimedes, aka Mini Thanos. I used Rack Attack to get all the wall crit spots and made sure that the fire button was unbinded so I didn't accidentally shoot. In due time we made it to Mini Thanos. Ben and I turned that boy into a Pizza Hut Pazone and now we had the final vault key piece. The thought of fighting Grave Ward using just Ben as damage was starting to haunt me. But I will have to deal with my problems one at a time. Like how the f*** did Clay literally just teleportation jutsu across the map? Aurelia was next on our hit list and fortunately this gym battle wasn't too bad. She clapped me up pretty good and it was annoying getting tossed around. But due to Ben's consistency and respecting women, he was able to dwindle her health down with every compliment he wrote in her Twitch chat. His white knighting seemed to work, she died, and now it was time for the next Elite Four member, Grave Ward. I wish I could have told you that this went well, but holy shit it really didn't. It took me 43 goddamn minutes just to kill Grave Ward himself. My rack attack barely seemed to ever work and all the damage had to be done by Ben. Which unfortunately didn't work out because I guess that dude was in heat. Every time I told him to focus Grave Ward, he would do anything but that. After 43 godforsaken minutes, Grave Ward was dead, Alita was kidnapped by the cringe twins, and it was time to rescue her. Ben and I went through the bandit festival asking those dudes about their fidget spinners and hot dog buns. Eventually, we found out that Carnivora was actually a f***ing tank and we tried getting it open. Unfortunately, after many failed attempts, I decided I must resort to my tactical barrel throwing attachment. I'm sorry I had to resort to this method, but it was necessary to proceed. I'm technically not killing anyone, just destroying barrels. I even made sure to kill the bandit reinforcement with my racks and Ben. But if you are unhappy with this, then screw you, and I'm telling your mom you have crusty socks under your bed. The Agonizer 9000 was next, and this f***er was going to get it for stealing my Code Lyoko looking head ass friend. This fight was also when I realized that Ben couldn't hit crit spots. Fortunately, this fight only took me 30 minutes compared to the 43 of the last fight, and after a couple of sick revive clutches, we were able to pull out with that W. With Aelita saved, one of the cringe twins did something important to Pandora, which... What that was, I'm, I'm, I don't really know, but I know that it was something bad. The assault on the cringe stronghold began. Fortunately, due to my level, the game was getting a bit easier. Ben popped the f*** off doing what he did best, and my racks destroyed a few relationships with the awful words they spoke. Austin Powers' sweaty armpit was the next Elite Four member that needed to be taken care of. Troy got clapped by my racks, and although I got a little cocky and gave up on humanity for a quick second, I finished off the fight, and that meant that there was only one final Elite Four member. I stormed Necro to Feo and met with the first vault hunter, Danny DeVito. Making my way to the vault, I was braced with a typical Borderlands move. A bridge getting destroyed, when I needed to get across that bridge. After performing a reach around, it was time for the last Elite Four member. This fight actually pissed me the fuck off. It was basically all RNG, seeing how many times I could hit my spacebar, avoiding all incoming damage. Ben did virtually nothing and basically healed the dude, giving him a massage, and it was all up to my racks. Now that Taint was dead, it was time for the champion of the Elite Four. I did a bit of prayer in the chamber that Danny DeVito clapped all those cheeks to and conceived the cringe twins, and then it was time for Tyreen. This battle, I was going to need everything I had, which was basically nothing, because that was all I had. My racks were the MVP, and I found out in the middle of this battle that I couldn't hit her crit spot, which prolonged the fight, but with just a bit of jumping around and spamming my action skill, it took around 25 minutes, and there it was. We did it. Ben and I were now the champions of the Pokemon League. This run took me around 32 hours, and I hope you took notes, boys, because with the influx of nerfs, this will be the only way to play Borderlands 3. The support recently has been absolutely astounding. I seriously love you all. If you guys like what I do here, Pokemon battle that like button. And if you want to see more of my aids, be sure to cuddle and caress that sub button. Follow me on my socials if you haven't already, and embrace this beauty as my Discord and I sing the Drake and Josh theme song.